I'm, I'm George, I'm the guy here behind the camera. I think you see, you've seen me taping lots of uh, user groups and stuff. And um, I am, uh, for a few years, I'm a member of uh, ACM, the Association of Computing Machinery, the oldest association in the world on um, uh, computing stuff. Uh, they publish for um, uh, communication of ACM, uh, the regular issue for each member. And also they have dedicated issues for specific areas. So uh, I've been inspired by um, uh, two articles that uh, came up in the, the March issue. Um, but the articles were actually about operating systems. So there were two uh, articles about operating systems. Uh, one uh, celebrating 50 years of research in operating systems, and another one of 70 years of Minix. Hmm. If you don't know, Minix was uh, the printing system that uh, inspired the um, Linux to build Linux. So, uh, uh, why am I interested in operating systems? Um, I, I am a software developer for uh, since uh, 1983. Um, I started learning uh, on the punch cards, then uh, Fortran Cobol, then Basic on CPM, then Fortran Cobol Basic. Exotic languages on PDP 11, and then uh, Vax, and then uh, PCs, and so on. Uh, I worked for Atrium for uh, two years in operating system group, uh, so um, I know a little bit about proprietary operating systems. Usually, I uh, I work on Windows platform due to the nature of my employer's uh, software stack. So I follow the Windows development from 3.1 NT XP. Eight, ten, and uh, so um, uh, why uh, I, I, uh, I found inspiration in these articles in, the, in this issue is uh, because I, I found some connection uh, related to Warloo, and uh, both articles were about lesson uh, learned by respective authors uh, from their experience in operating systems, and uh, I found some connection with the Warloo. Um, uh, I will uh, reveal them right now so that we have kind of agenda. Um, it is um, about um, the development of Minix, um, uh, the Waterloo alumni uh, uh, team that developed coherent operating system have been used by Tannenbau to develop Minix uh, because he didn't have a C compiler, so he used coherent to develop his first version of Linux. Oh, sorry, of Minix that uh, Minix later had been used uh, to build uh, Linux. And um, uh, in, in, in the article uh, of uh, Tannenbaum about the Minix, he talks about uh, microkernels and uh, their reliability and so on. And that uh, um, triggered me an idea about the QNX operating system that uh, it, is, uh, it looks like it's one of the most reliable operating system. Uh, due to the microkernel uh, architecture. And we know that now uh, QNX is uh, uh, property of uh, BlackBerry. Uh, so, um, can you move forward? Yep. So here it's about what I was saying. Um, it, in 1947, the Associate of Computer Machinery uh, was founded. Uh, another organization that kind of competes with ACM is uh, IEEE but they are more from the engineering point of view. Uh, their corresponding uh, publication is computer, named computer. Um, ACM has a CACM, communication with ACM. Um, but the ACM was the first uh, association, uh, so in 1947 they real realized that they need to um, uh, build this uh, uh, association dedicated to professionals. And uh, the articles are on both sides, are academic and uh, also like for software professionals. So for 100 bucks uh, US or 140 Canadian, <laughs> you're a member and uh, you can, there are other advantages. Next. Is ACM selective? Pardon? ACM, is it selective? Because I haven't heard of it this for ages. Selective is still active. 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 Yes, yes. Because I haven't heard of it. Ages. Yeah, it's I, I remember it in 1975 or six. My <laughs> professor 
<laughs> Seriously, uh, he actually suggested that I uh, subscribe and especially to mention the yeah. uh, communications of this. Yeah. Now, but unfortunately, I couldn't afford the time. So, but uh, I, I was, uh, you know, I knew it was really big at the time. You know, there was number one source, you know, like IT police for the electronics. Uh, but since I don't know how long, I haven't heard any of the website. Yet, so I was wondering if it's still working or it's still active. Yeah, it has a lot of uh, special interest groups. Uh, we'll see one of the operating systems has on computer graphics, software engineering. I mean, uh, they're on top of things. Am I going next now? Yeah. All right. So uh, this is uh, the first article that talks about the 50 years of operating systems. Uh, so it says the, the number of uh, distinct new operating system, uh, like from 9 introducing 950 uh, to around 350. So the, in the, in the, the 2010 uh, decade. So the the work on operating system is uh, still uh, very active because we still don't have the the ideal operating system. Yes. And this is the other article by Tannenbaum. He, he has a well-known book on operating systems. And here he, he, takes, uh, he, he tells the whole story of 30 years of development of Minix. Uh, next. Um, uh, yeah, this, uh, the, this is the introductory chapter part of the first article of 50 years and uh, why because I was puzzled why, why 50 years because uh, it should be like uh, he said in October last year so that, that means 1965 but I, I went and searched the time of operating system I've seen the uh, operating system started from 1950 so why he says that uh, uh, we're talking about 1965 is because the, that's the time where um, they um, uh, created this uh, uh, special group on operating system principles. And uh, actually, at that time, they crystallized what are the fundamental principles. They are saying there are eight fundamental principles of a modern operating system. Yes? And uh, th this is the operating system principle uh, group, uh, how it evolved in 90, 1967. They have every two years a symposium where they talk about uh, um, the principle of operating system. For example, ARPANET, the, the architecture of ARPANET was presented one of these, I don't remember in what year, uh, one of these uh, uh, conferences. Yes. Um, so here I just uh, uh, checked to see uh, that the operating system actually starts from 1950, but uh, the modern operating system, next. Uh, so here in 1964, um, um, uh, 1965. So they are saying that uh, OS 3.6 of IBM implemented this modern first operating system in these modern principles. And then uh, notable is uh, the Multix operating system, um, a joint venture between MIT, General Electric, and Dell Labs. And we'll see that this actually was most advanced uh, at that time in the, the concept, the implementation of the concept, and actually Unix evolved from this, from Multex. Um, next. Um, now I'm going to the second article, because both articles cover uh, this common uh, historical area. So um, uh, Tannenbaum talks here um, uh, the, the beginning of uh, the modern operating system, and. Um, here he, he uh, they put some bullet points. <coughs> what uh, what are the main features of uh, operating system? Uh, I mean, th this one is uh, related uh, um, to the microkernel architecture. That means the drive device driver should be independent from the kernel because um, otherwise uh, a bug there would, would crash the operating system. So it looks like QNX is so reliable because they, it has this uh, independent processes that uh, when, when one it fails, it will restart, but uh, the operating system uh, will still uh, will not crash. Uh, next. Um, uh, here is the, the story of uh, <coughs> Multix. Um, that it was running the General Electric 
Uh, some people might not know that General Electric uh, has been in the computer uh, hardware uh, business. Um, but uh, the story is uh, uh, they, they had to pay a royalty to IBM <laughs> because they needed this big uh, mainframe, so they decided to build one. And uh, that's the, the time when Ken Thompson and Damien Ricci, the, they was, Dennis Ricci was, were uh, involved in the, um, this, uh, <coughs> this operating system. But later on, because the, the system was uh, too big, it had been canceled. So, uh, next. Um, uh, yeah, this is the Wikipedia entry. Next. Uh, and they have a, a site of uh, the, the Multix officiados where uh, uh, there is a lot of controversy. Uh, MIT says that it has been a great success, but uh, Ken Thompson uh, from the Unix side says that it was too big, or, uh, so he doesn't think so. Next. And uh, here are some novel ideas uh, from in the, the Multix uh, operating system. So it says it has a memory usage um, mapping files. Um, it has dynamic linking, the first time introduced, yeah. Um, next. Um, uh, this is the General Electric, the, their operating system. I just put a note here. Um, next. And um, uh, here how the, the timeline of uh, Unix evolved. Um, um, so we see here Minix, I don't have the, the dates here, but we see the Minix uh, coming in here, and from Minix uh, Linux evolved. We have uh, uh, Richard uh, Stallman, the author of the Cathedral of Bazaria, of the uh, uh, GNU project, and uh, I just watched the video. Why? Because they uh, they uh, came up with the idea that you, you should have a, a free operating system um, available um, um, aside from a bell uh, monopoly of the Unix uh, operating system, um, and uh, but for some reason uh, they were not able to build a, a kernel in time. So I just watched a video where they, uh, he said that their architecture was was uh, a good idea, but uh, it was hard to implement. Where they said uh, they, they had all these processes where we send messages between them, but it was very hard to debug. So it, it looks like, like uh, them, them years to, to, to fix this kernel, but in the meantime, um, uh, Linux already was uh, like uh, an available kernel. Yeah. Next. Um, um, here it's uh, just uh, the reference to the coherent. Yeah, the Waterloo alumni developed this. Uh, it is found fascinating that uh, this is a good lesson to learn that uh, even though you have like a copyrighted uh, restriction, yeah, you, you can go around it, <laughs> and uh, you know they are they are encouraged to develop uh, uh, this uh, uh, Unix-like system was like crucial uh, in, a, in a Linux path, uh, yeah, uh, but uh, again. Uh, you can argue what, what if alternative history, if Coherent was not there, uh, you know, uh, if uh, Linux had found another or alternative operating system to develop this idea. But uh, the advantage of Minix is that, uh, um, and coming uh, uh, on this article makes uh, detailed uh, references uh, to Linux posting uh, on the internet that the code is heavily commented. The Tannenbaum uh, code of uh, Minix, yeah, it was heavily commented, so it was easier for him to, to develop the Linux idea. Uh, next. Uh, here is the entry from the uh, Wikipedia entry. Um, and, yeah, it, it says that uh, what I mentioned before, yeah. The copyright infringement next. Um, here I make uh, <coughs> another reference. Uh, this is a good lesson when uh, uh, Tannenbaum says during development of Minix kernel, uh, the system was crashing and he, he was, uh, was about to abandon the project because on the, the metal, uh, yeah, on the, the real uh, machine, the system was crashing and he developed a simulator and it was, uh, on the simulator, it was not crashing. 
So then he, one of his students says that uh, the 888 uh, processor had a lot bug of interrupt 15. So actually it was the hardware fault rather than the software. So the, the, here it's a, the lesson, do not trust the documentation, yeah? Because he was about to give up yeah, developing the system uh, because of a hardware bug. Yeah, so I found very fascinating. Next. And uh, yeah, he, he said that there is a, on the, the web page, there is a video of uh, Tan about uh, giving us a more summary of the article. And, and he said that uh, we followed his effort, Android will not be here. <laughs> because Android is uh, based on the Linux kernel. Next. And uh, yeah, there I uh, come up with the QNX uh, system, uh, the, the micro kernel architecture. Next. Um, um, yeah. uh, here it, it gives the details um, uh, about the, uh, how the microkernel is working. Next. Um, um, yeah. Is the micro microkernel in Wikipedia? Next. Um, now the, there is a debate I found also fascinated between uh, Tannenbaum and Torvalds, yeah, about uh, if Linux is a uh, monolith of microkernel, yeah, and uh, in the the article of Tannenbaum about the Minix, he said that uh, it is very hard to to keep a microkernel uh, uh, architecture consistent because due to performance issue. So sometimes you take a shortcut and you you jump over microkernel just to get game performance. So it looks like Windows is doing also this kind of things. Because there is also this debate if Windows is microkernel or monolith, yeah? And the, the evolution to Windows 10, it looks like it goes to microkernel, but they still get shortcuts to get performance. Next. Uh, that's the, the architecture. Next. Uh, also, there is no notion of hybrid kernel where we combine with what I was saying before. You combine monolith with a microkernel for performance reason. Next. Um, yeah, this is about Windows NT. It's also the, the hybrid kernel entry. And next. Oh, that's all. So, uh, <laughs> um, yeah, I, uh, if, you, if you read entirely carefully the, the article about Minix, um, um, Tannenbaum, the author, says that um, um, his idea is to evolve Minix, now it's at version 3, to evolve the operating system to be fault tolerant. Uh, what I was saying before, so that you, you have uh, trust in operating system will not crash on you. And uh, um, yeah, it's, uh, I, I think, uh, uh, I don't know too much detail about QNX, but uh, uh, BB10 was based of QNX, and uh, the, um, some tech article I went through, it looks like they, they were focusing on having high uh, reliability in printing system. But it looks like the market uh, doesn't care too much about <laughs> this. <laughs> there are other criteria where uh, uh, the operating system is uh, successful. And I have a video on there. Have you seen it? No. Oh, do, oh, wait, like, here, do you want me to play it? Yeah. All right. Well, I'll do my best, but bear with me. I'm a terrible human. Right at the end, it's 999. 999? Yeah. All right, please hold. I make my life more difficult than I need to. Were you using some sort of QNX operating system? Pretty close. <laughs> oh yeah, that's... Uh, if you're wondering uh, the, the accent, yeah? It looks like Russian, but actually I'm from Romania. <laughs> uh, we were uh, neighbors with former Soviet Union, part of the communist bloc, yeah? So uh, sometimes Hollywood will confuse Romania with Russia. <laughs> But uh, here is the, the capital, yeah, where I worked, and uh, just uh, this is a Google Earth uh, image to put the uh, Romania on the map.
Is that it? Yeah. <laughs>